Hello, my name's Charlotte Hacking. I'm the Learning Programs Leader here at CLPE, and I'm here to talk about Chris Horton's Don't Worry Little Crab. We are big fans of Chris Horton here at CLPE. Lots of his books appear on our core book list, and Oh No George is a regular favourite in the Power of Reading Early Years collection. This year, we've put Don't Worry Little Crab onto our Teaching Reading course in the Early Years Foundation stage. It's a real perfect book for early readers to introduce them to the rhythms, the patterns of language, to get them using their phonics at the point of reading to help them decode unknown words, and to help them think about how storytelling works when they're telling stories of their own. The cover offers us a beautiful introduction to this main character, immediately drawing us in to being empathetic with his huge eyes looking out at us as we're told, don't worry, little crab. And we're immediately thinking, why is the little crab worrying? We want to empathise with him. We want to go on his story with him. And this unfolds as we look inside the book. So as we see this very first spread here, we're introduced to little crab and very big crab. And we're immediately taken into their home. We've got this lovely warm setting of the tiny rock pool in which they live. And the language that Chris Horton's chosen really does draw us into being empathetic with the character. We know he's a little crab. We know he's there with a very big crab and they live in a tiny rock pool. We just get a hint of the world that's around us and then we get taken into the story and invited to turn the page. As we turn the page, we see just how big the world is to Little Crab, and we know that they're off on an adventure to the sea. Little Crab is very excited. You can see by his body language, his claws sticking up, and he knows it's going to be so great. But we get this idea from the scale used by the rock on the page that it's a very big journey for him to take. It's not all smooth sailing. Everything is rocky and craggy. And we see the idea that the sea is crashing as they meet the rock. The next pages are absolutely brilliant for early readers. They'll get to chime in one of the really important early reading skills as they work out the sounds that Little Crab and Very Big Crab use on their journey. Tick-a-tack, splish-splash and squelch-squelch. There's lovely patterns of three, which are really common in storytelling that Chris Horton uses to give us the beats of the story to the next step. And there's some lovely alliterative language. They go through the slimy, slippery seaweed, which just encourages those early readers to listen out for those phonemes that they're going to be introduced to as they learn the phonetic code. We see how Very Big Crab has that touching relationship. Don't worry, he says, it'll be okay, as Little Crab tries to get excuses not to go into the sea. We normally tell children not to use conjunctions at the beginning of a sentence, but this is a fantastic way of highlighting the anticipation that Little Crab is feeling. But the waves are getting bigger. We then see just a focus on Little Crab as he gets brave enough, again in beats of three, to step into the sea by himself. And we see the excitement. He physically grows bigger on the page, showing his grown confidence. And we see the excitement as he announces, I'm in the sea! So many different types of punctuation to let children know how to use their voice as they read along with you. As they see an enormous wave that carries them deeper and deeper into the sea. The world of the underwater is opened up. And again, those beats down, 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 help the children to join in with you. And the beautiful, colorful undersea world is opened up as little crab sees a world he's never seen before. Everything about a young child's experience in the Early Years Foundation stage is about forming relationships and making relationships, about welcoming each other into a setting. And this is a lovely page that helps them to look at the value of welcoming others, feeling part of a community and being friends with each other. And trying new experiences. 
And on this page, children can really, really give you those personal responses that you want as they're developing that skill of self-regulation in the early years foundation stage. As they enter the setting, it's all about being confident to try out new things and they can join Little Crab on his journey as he eats delicious seaweed, something he's never tried before. As he runs across the sea floor, you'll be wanting children to try out new things in the setting, to climb over equipment, to jump, to run, to play. And this beautiful scene gives them the confidence that they're part of a community that's doing that as well. Um, and having a giant game of hide and seek gives you that opportunity to talk to children about what they like playing with their friends. Do they have favourite games that they like to return to in the setting? At this point, it's time for Little Crab to go home. But of course, as Very Big Crab announces that, he's just said, I love the sea. And we know immediately he's not going to want to leave this beautiful, new and magical place. And Very Big Crab understands this as well. As he says, I really don't want to go home with those big eyes that you can't resist saying no to. Very Big Crab tells him, we'll take the long way home. And Little Crab is now the one leading the way and he's pointing Very Big Crab off down this colourful long path home. And as the story ends on the last page, we see that confidence in full effect. Little Crab is at the top of this peak. He's the person in power with his arms raised high with that confidence to know that he can go anywhere as told to him by a very big crab. And off they go on some new adventures. Thank you.